So the piece is titled, well, the show is titled Culturally Modified. Um, and I started to reflect on culturally modified trees. I'm currently doing my master's right now at the University of Victoria. So a lot of my studies that I've been really focusing on has been around preservation. So I'm kind of really thinking about the preservation of forests or ecosystems and how that dramatically affects our oceans and rivers. Um, so, and within that actually, because of the logging practices that are happening right now on Vancouver Island, they're really wiping out a lot of our traditional territories at a very fast rate. Um, within those logging practices, culturally modified trees are also being removed. Um, so for people who don't understand what a culturally modified tree is, um, it's where the bark has been pulled from the tree uh, to be harvested. So traditionally, us as Kwakwakiwak and many other indigenous people up and down the coast, um, we have used cedar bark for regalia, for clothing, for baskets, for, you know, masks, mats, all sorts of things. And we've always given thanks to the cedar tree because we call it the tree of life. Um, but we have stories that run so deep into the relationship that we had with the environment and with the trees. I mean, science is starting to catch up now and I say, you know, trees have this ability to speak to each other, um, that they connect, you know, through this network, through the root system um, you know, where they're pulling nutrients and feeding fungi and that, you know, helps with the nutrients back and then the trees kind of formulate and work in this kind of amazing, well, I mean, you know, we call it networking. But I mean, I think from an old perspective when I'm reading stories is that the indigenous people of that time already knew that. Um, I think there was a you know, a very profound relationship that was there. And it's something that has been severed even with us today as Indigenous people, thinking about our relationships to the environment, you know. I mean, colonization has pushed us away from our traditional territories, put us on reserves. But it's also the effects of time right now has really severed a lot of those more deeper meanings and why we used to do the things we did. I mean, we didn't cut the entire tree down. We only pulled one strip of bark because the tree would continue to grow and it would close that one strip where the, where the bark came off. And if we needed planks, we would go to other certain trees and we could make a wedge and pull a plank out of a tree and still allow the tree to grow. So the gratitude that we gave back you know, to these, you know, living organisms that were all around us, deep within these very lush ecosystems. Um, that's the attention that I'm trying to bring back. So I'm using ancient origin stories, these stories that talk about, you know, our very beginnings that laid a foundation on um, what these relationships were, were really meant to be. So we talk about the first ancestors coming from the heavens, you know, and they descend from the sun, the stars, you know, from, you know, the cosmos. Our culture talks about the Milky Way. You know, we talk about all of these different things um, uh, that were bestowed upon us in descending here. So we built the first house, you know, and there are these houses of knowledge, houses of sharing knowledge, a house of security. But the teachings that were in that foundation that was being built was really about the harmonious relationship that we had with the environment. That, you know, only take what you need pretty much, you know? That we are guests to this planet. You know, the planet, the trees and all of these living organisms are one with it. And we considered ourselves one at one time from an from an ancient perspective. And that's changed over time. And I think, you know, in this modern day and age where we're still searching now for that connection again, to be reconnected. Um, so the piece talks about 
the rave in Umeh. Um, I'm from Alert Bay, I'm Numgis, and within my nation, we referred to him as Utmeh. Many, many cultures have the raven and have their own stories, but to us, he was Utmeh. And Utmeh was the one who brought light to the world. Um, and they say in the beginning of time, the world was in darkness. And it was him who, you know, he went to went through all these different obstacles, I guess you can say, just to make a story, long story short, um, to obtain light from a great chief to bring that light to the world. And light meaning stars, moon, the sun. And they say in the beginning he was white and he had a really soft song. Uh, so anyway, in through his trials and then of obtaining light, he burnt his tongue on the elements of fire and as he was flying through the smoke hole in the chief's, from the chief's big house, the soot made him black. So that's why today the raven is black and now he has a really hoarse sound and it's not a pretty song because he burnt his tongue. And that was a reminder of uh, what he went through. Um, but the message that came back from Utmesh wasn't so much about the literal translation it was the world was in darkness because we were searching for something more and we needed more connection and more understanding and it was the ability to learn, his ability to pass knowledge. So what he was bringing was enlightenment. He was bringing that sense of connection to everybody that we are all here together and we need to work together. So he said to mankind, you know, I will give you the light, the day of light, and what comes with that is darkness. So as you're going on your spiritual quests and you're cleansing and you're bathing and you're being one in the forest with all of these other living organisms, to remember that. And as the sun is rising, go to the highest peak in the mountains and bathe and cleanse because that's where the glacier water is and the colder it is, it will cleanse everything that's negative from your body. And you do that as the sun is rising because the higher the sun gets, the stronger it makes you and it's more whole. So the raven said to live within the day and not to, for and to forget about yesterday. And that's why we cleanse and that's why we bathe is because we're a progressive culture. And it's about moving forward all the time. So he said he would return one day in white form again to remind us when the earth and us as human beings are imbalanced. And if he feels like the earth isn't um, deserving of the attention it needs, and we are there, you know, we're faced with climate change now, we're faced with, you know, destruction amongst each other as human beings. You know, I think, you know, racism, systemic racism, capitalism, commercialism, consumerism, all these things, we're eating ourselves alive right now. So Utmesh is here to bring attention to that, to kind of restore that balance. Um, because we can't no longer move and go forward at this rate. So I did the piece to really exemplify some of these ancient teachings that we can take into this contemporary time. Um, traditionally, I studied um, as an apprentice from Master Carver, um, and I learned how to carve wood and do traditional design. Um, but it wasn't until I began my master's uh, in fine arts at the University of Victoria where I started to ask myself some deeper questions around preservation and my, my place in it all as a traditional wood carver. I think, you know, traditionally we'd like to say, yeah, you know, um, it's our given right from the very beginning of time, the forests are ours, it's our material, it's how we should express ourselves. But I feel personally that we've reached a point where we can no longer even share in that perspective anymore. We have to stand um, in solidarity with what is happening to Mother Earth. And if it means preserving our forests, then it means looking at alternatives in materials and how we're going to be storytellers. So the piece talks about, you know, Umeh, who is in contemporary material standing on a cut block. And it's the tree 
and it's saying, you know, it's almost like a birth of a new story. So he's here to remind us to bring balance, but the materialities that are being used is also uh, a way of me expressing, hey, we can still be storytellers and talk about, you know, all of these great things that make us who we are as Indigenous people, but we can still act within preservation too when we talk about forests and our ecosystems. So the, um, the Umesh is standing on the cut block for that reason, but he's surrounded by these big planks and the planks are the house planks and it's the collapse of something that wasn't working. It's the collapse of the structure, the foundations of colonization, of religion, of all these different things that you know, have been so detrimental in the progress of who we are as human beings. So Utmeth is pushing through that, and that's why that system is collapsing and saying we can't, we can't continue to push uh, any longer. And what happens when something crumbles, we rebuild. So the question that I'm putting out through this piece really is about, you know, the tipping point. Have we reached that tipping point where we've gone too far now that, you know, the planet is just going to suffer? You know, we talk about climate change and that's the biggest thing that needs attention right now. Um, where are we within that spectrum is the question. So Umeth is in white, he's got his fist up, um, which relates to our current time right now. You know, it's the rise of indigenous people in our voices. It's the rise of, you know, whether it's Black Lives Matter, Indigenous Lives Matter, murder, missing indigenous women, you know, um, survivors of residential school, the voices of our children. You know, what is the foundation that we're trying to build looking forward? So as an indigenous person myself, what does the next 150 years look like? If the past 150 years of Canada has been so detrimental to who we are as Indigenous people, what are we going to do for the next 150 years to make sure that we are also upholding our responsibilities? Because we carry a responsibility from our ancestors that Utmeth placed upon us um, to also heal to also move forward, to share that knowledge with the world, to share why these things are important. If we hold on to the ingredients right now that can help make the world a better place, then that's a responsibility that was placed on us from the very beginning to share that connection with people. Um, and I just really believe in that. And uh, anyway, the one fist is up. And the other hand is the left hand, and it has a totem pinky on it because in Western cultures, it's the left hand, the left pinky is the finger of information. So I'm questioning what that information is, and has that information been relevant, or does it hold some sort of meaning within this current place that where we are and where we're going? Um, so for me, I was looking at everything that Western culture, you know, we talk about Western, I'm talking about, you know, European influence coming out of, you know, the dominant cultures that have taken over our country today as Canada and forced so much upon us as Indigenous people. I'm putting that hand down because it's not relevant anymore. It's up to us now, you know, to be the authors, to be the storytellers of, you know, to bring the message forward. And they say Utmeth was the messenger. He's the raven. He's the one who brought everything. Um, so it's been really enjoyable working on this piece because Utmeth went through many different, you know, trials and obstacles. He was the first one to obtain water, and he was the first one to give rivers and you know and give the you know, the nurturing ability that, you know, Mother Earth gives to us through rivers and water and nourishment. Uh, he dove to the deepest depths, you know, in the oceans and he established plant life for that to grow on Earth and plants turned into medicines and different things like that. So he really is a creator in many different ways. And, you know, religions have their messengers all over the world, whether it's a faith or whatever it is that you believe in, 
you know, um, it could be Buddha, it could be Jesus, you know, it could be uh, Baha'u'llah, it doesn't matter what faith you look at, but they're messengers that are all, that have all descended to bring a message to the world about what it is to keep good faith and a good balance. And I believe, you know, we had Umeh, and he was the one who kind of brought those first messages so it's really about a resurrection in some sort of way of the messages that, you know, that we've been ignorant to and I think, you know, deserves attention again.